Um, on, on the issue of how we communicate with each other um, between the rural and urban areas, um, I like to make sure that I have a foot in both worlds, because I really do. Um, I grew up in what could best be described as a sagebrush subdivision just south of Bend. Um, and that was when the city of Bend had two mills, uh, and we didn't have any driving circles. Um, and it truly was an agricultural and timber city. And you all know how it's translated itself into an outdoor recreation mecca. So, uh, so much so that it's probably loving itself to death right now uh, through tourism. Um, I, my parents still live there and I'm contemplating, well, I'm planning to go with my children to their house for the eclipse. And so that's all well and good, but I still haven't figured out my secret route to forgetting uh, between Salem and Bend without going on one of the major highways. But uh, that's an example of, of uh, one of the challenges that we have as we translate um, from uh, 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 natural resource intensive economies to a mix of different uh, economic uh, strategies. Um, I wanted to uh, highlight uh, three bills and a couple of pieces of undone business. Um, and then I'll let other folks talk. Um, the bills represent, I think, uh, small but significant um, steps in the way we work together um, throughout the state. Um, and before I go into that, I just wanted to say from, from my perspective in the House of Representatives and the, as the chair of the Committee on Energy and Environment, there was a palpable sense this session, and, very, uh, and, and I agreed with it, to make room for the transportation package. Make sure that we got it done. And therefore, aspirations for some other bills were uh, not set aside so much, but given secondary emphasis. And I thought that was the right thing to do because the transportation package benefits the whole state, and sometimes in ways that we wouldn't anticipate uh, immediately. So that being said, these three bills may seem small, but they will have uh, positive impacts and uh, they're good models for us. The first is a program that we reauthorized and uh, refund that funded again, uh, in a, and remember in a very tight budget situation, that funds, um, uh, helps folks uh, analyze and fix their septic systems. And you may know that around the state, in certain parts of the state, we have water tables that are very vulnerable to septic systems that happen to be failing or malfunctioning. And many, in many of those places, um, they're populated by folks that don't have a ton of money to undertake those fixes, and the fixes are expensive. So uh, a number of years ago, we established a program that set some state money up um, to be matched, if possible, with private funds and uh, would, would provide a mechanism by which folks could tap into uh, a funding stream to get their septic system checked out and then fixed. That worked so well that we decided to do it again. It turns out that we were able to uh, leverage the state money by three or four times and get private money in the door to do the same thing. That is, and, and that is an example of a, a program where the private sector is doing most of the work, government has set up the money and some monitoring and stepped out of the way, uh, and we're gonna get a lot of good things done. And I very much hope that we're able to leverage even more private money toward that work uh, with this reauthorization. The second was uh, a, a program that would allow um, wood product waste to come out of the forest and to be used, either pelletized or otherwise used, um, to create cleaner, not green energy under definition, but cleaner energy um, in our rural areas to be used in boilers and so forth uh, for public buildings. Um, and that means schools, it means other public buildings. Uh, the existing law allowed about 1.5% of uh, public building financing to go toward clean or green energy uh, production. Typically in the past that has been geothermal and solar. And uh, we had a bill that came over from the Senate, um, again a bipartisan type of, of bill um, led by uh, Senator Knope, 
uh, it came over to my committee and met resistance. And the reason it met resistance is it had met resistance for the three or four previous long sessions because it was viewed that this type of energy generation is not quite clean enough, not quite green enough. Uh, but I saw things differently. I saw this as a way to acknowledge that we had moved along in technology and that we had abundant resources in um, the timber growing parts of the state that were underutilized and that we could make use of in this way uh, and, and forge a little bit of progress on a very important topic, which is how do we wring the last bit of value out of our forest after we've gotten the saw logs out? How do we use that slash? And this is a way, and it is a small step, but I think an important step as we go forward. The third is, uh, again, harkens back to the way that communities like Bend and Oak Ridge, Joseph, sisters have been changing their economies over time to rely more on tourism. And I was invited to chief sponsor a bill with Representative Mark Johnson that created an Office of Outdoor Recreation. And it is going to be, it was intended to be and will be, uh, the primary touch point for the outdoor recreation industry um, to have a voice in the, inside state agencies and with the legislature. This was very much wanted and brought to us by the outdoor recreation industry, both in the state and nationally. And you would recognize many of the names of the companies that we worked with in getting this legislation done. As we do that, we can leverage what is nationally and in the state a huge industry, huge. Um, and we have not yet begun to tap its potential even though as Oregonians and as the friendly visitors that like to come and do the things that I like to do, like whitewater rafting, fly fishing, mountain biking, um, we wring some money out of them when they come to visit and it is a relatively low impact way to do that for our state and generate tax revenue. So here's some unfinished business. The biggest piece is that we still have not figured out how to adequately fund our natural resources agencies, in particular um, our Department of uh, Fish and Wildlife. And there are folks in this room, including myself, that worked very hard to try to figure that out in the interim uh, uh, after uh, tw uh, 2015. We have declining sales of uh, fishing licenses and hunting licenses over time. It's a trend that we anticipate will continue. Yet the department does many, many important things that props up our, our economy, especially in rural areas. We were not able to push forward a bill that helped figure out how to fund that, even though we had some great ideas and a task force that worked extremely hard in the interim uh, to generate those ideas. And that's, for me, that's unfinished business. It's really important business, and it's indicative of the way we treat our natural resources agencies in this state. And I think it's a particular challenge for us that are concerned with rural communities because folks in the state tend to forget, I think, that those natural resource agencies are also economic development agencies because they monitor, they help, and they regulate our natural resources industries. And those industries need permits that they can rely on, not ones that are vulnerable to litigation, that are shoddy and not go out the door too quick because we don't have enough agency staff to do them correctly. And I, uh, I'll rant again here as I did on the floor at the end of the session. We need more general fund money for our natural resources agencies to serve the state better. And we fall down session after session after session in doing so. Uh, so there's more uh, work to be done there to put our brains against this problem yet fixed. Second unfinished business is that uh, we've talked about water uh, for a long, long time in this state, um, and uh, I reinitiated a conversation about water this session, and I introduced three bills that uh, all of which um, didn't go anywhere. One of them didn't go anywhere because we asked for money that wasn't available for groundwater studies. The two others didn't go anywhere because after talking with folks that know a lot more than I do about water and Remember, I studied water law when I was in law school and followed it throughout my career. It's so complex that it needs more time to work on. 
Um, and even though we got close to some legislation that would have required some form of reporting out on that landscape, I felt that we weren't done with that work, and so I pulled the plug on it. And I thought that was a good decision, um, and I'll keep working on it. So uh, for those of you who got the calls that I probably generated through these bills saying, well, are you talking about putting a fee on my domestic water well? No, we weren't. But we'll keep talking about how we better manage water. And when we do that, we really help prop up and make more stable those parts of the state that rely both on surface water and groundwater for their livelihood. And uh, I'll be working on that in the future as well. Thanks.